Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to Glastonbury, so stay tuned and see you soon. We just got here to Glastonbury Abbey. Dating back to the 8th century, Glastonbury Abbey was once one of the wealthiest and most powerful monasteries in England and it's reaching pinnacle in the 14th century. It's controlled most of the Somerset levels regions at one point and of course it drew people from all over the town and it's part of the reason why it's developed as it is. So to visit the Abbey is uh, 10 pounds entry, well actually 11 pounds entry, so we are going to go inside and visit the Abbey you now. After a disastrous fire at the Abbey in 1184, the Lady Chapel was quickly rebuilt and it began as a detached building of four bays which was completed in just two years. And in the early 13th century it was linked to the west front of the Abbey Church when the Galilee Chapel was constructed. The east wall of the Lady Chapel was taken down later in the century and the screen separated the two chapels. St. Joseph's Crypt was built during the Abbey of Richard Beer. Uh, between 1493 and 1524 as a place for special burials and the veneration of her relics. Its construction required digging out beneath the floor of the Lady Chapel and raising the floor level to allow headroom in the crypt below. After the dissolution of Glastonbury Abbey in 1539, the chapels and the crypt fell into despair and much of the um, carved stonework was sold off for building material. Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, the buildings became AV, called romantic ruins and a popular subject for artists.
After the dissolution of the monasteries, the building was stripped of lead and dressed stones was passed from person to person, used for a few purposes until it was declared a ruin in the 18th century. However, the ruins still stand and they are worth a visit while you are exploring the town. Here we have medieval kitchen garden. Uh, gardens were an important feature of all English bandicins. Monasteries, documentary sources tell us that Glastonbury, Glastonbury Abbey had a great garden and little garden, as well as an orchard, vineyard, herb garden, vegetable plots, and flower beds and horse pastures. The kitchen garden was essential to the largely vegetarian monastic diet. The apple orchard. Traditional orchard cultivation began to decline with the fall of the Roman Empire, but the associated skills and general knowledge may have survived into the late medieval period within settled monastic communities passed down through their teachings. Mon monasteries were well suited to developing and cultivating such skills as planting, grafting and pruning in the monastic orchards or pomaria. Orchards were prized for their blossom in the spring, shade in the summer and the fruit at the end of the year. Apples and pears were brewed to make cider and perry with many monasteries regularly selling the cider to the public and most people drank alcohol because the drinking water was often not of good enough quality to drink. This farm has a lot of trees with apples. It's amazing. Like, I don't even know how many trees there are here, but there are a lot. Look at this. Of course, you cannot take them, but there's plenty on the ground as well. I don't know if you can see, but they are Tons. So yeah, they are making cider out of it and uh, apple juice, which they sell it in the um, Abbey shop. So you can buy it from there if you really want to try the apple juice. Wow, what a beautiful place. It's, it's really worth coming and visit this place because it's such a unique place to still be able to see these ruins of the Glastonbury Abbey. We are now on the way to see the Glastonbury Tour.
we are at the bottom now so we are getting ready to go up and to have the workout of the day <laughs> workout of the day started trying not to die it's okay it's not that bad <laughs> but look I have a view behind and we made it here and we didn't die <laughs> we arrived here successfully but look what the view behind me and I'm gonna show you that Glastonbury tour in a second which is behind me Ooh. This is one of the most iconic landmarks in the West Country and it's, it towers over the Somerset levels, you can see it from miles. Plus from the top you can see in vistas of Dorset, Wiltshire and Wales. Of course, one of the best things to do in Glastonbury is, unsurprisingly, the most famous, famous festival in the world, which is Glastonbury Festival. Usually regarded as the best festival in the UK, this is a celebration of all different types of music with lots of other amusements and amusements and events. However, be aware that it's not an easy festival to get tickets for. They usually tickets open far, far in advance and tickets sell out in minutes. But of course, if you want to attend the Glastonbury Festival, please make sure you keep an eye on their website to see when the tickets will be released and then try to reserve them off using multiple devices at the same time. So you never know on which device you're gonna get ticket to. to talk in silent because it's, this it has to be a quiet place because people are meditating here but as you can see we are at the whale water the chalice whale since ancient times wells have been regulated as sacred places giving the access to the mysterious and divine here we honor and others have done for thousands of years the well and the healing and restoration is over. It's also known as the red spring or blood spring because of the red iron deposit the water leaves on everything it touches and many legends are attributed to these waters. For example, the myth that they represent the blood of Christ. The lion's head drinking fountain is the only place in the garden where the water is safe to drink the water here comes directly from the spring and is regularly tested for quality and safety as the water is rich in iron and it should not be taken in large quantities so here when you buy the tickets you can also buy a bottle of water which is empty but you fill it in from the lion's head fountain 
So we did that as well. As it says, it has healing properties. So yeah, we shall see. It has a really, really strong taste of iron. So it's not recommended to drink as uh, normal water, just a few, few sips. And before my battery dies, I just want to say thank you for coming along with me today to Glastonbury. It's such a beautiful town and it's worth a visit. It's very, very interesting. There is a lot of myths and legends uh, that comes from here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Until then, please stay safe, take care of each other. Goodbye!